How's it going everybody? This video is going to be a quick overview of the Bridgeport slotting attachment that goes on the back of a Series 1 milling machine. Now this one I picked up a couple of months ago and it's in pretty sad shape. It's got a lot of surface rust. It was just sitting in the corner of this guy's garage for a couple of years and it's been pretty neglected and needs cleaned up. Uh, what this thing does is it is primarily used for putting slots and things. Say like those pulleys right there, you can see how they have a keyway milled into it. And what this thing is perfect for is you clamp a pulley into your vise on your milling machine and use this as a tool to cut that keyway in. This particular shaper is powered by a one-third horsepower 110 volt motor that spins at 1720 RPMs. Uh, you adjust the strokes per minute using the step pulley system, and there's also an additional adjustment for the length of stroke. So if you want to cut a shallow shaft or a longer uh, keyway, you can do that. As you can see, this has what on the end of it that aluminum looking thing that I'm about to take off. That's a uh, replacement for the clapper box. Somebody had custom made that, and it is a very tight fit. You can see me trying to bash it off there with a hammer. It was really stuck on there. It took a lot of penetrating oil to get that off. Uh, don't know where the original clapper box is. It got lost in this thing's lifetime somewhere. So when you're thinking about how this shaper works, it's very similar to a car engine. You have a crankshaft with a connecting rod, and instead of a piston, you have this square housing right there. You can see the fished uh, scale marks on it. That is from where it was scraped in at the factory. This being a bridge port is a very high quality machine, a very precision machine. They don't want a lot of slop in that shaft as it's coming in and out making those strokes because that's a give you a very poor uh, cut quality on the part that you're making. So it needs to be a very tight tolerance. So you can take that cap off there and we're going to get into this. At some point it got water inside of the housing here and that's where you're getting all this rust from. It's important to get all the rust out of these working components that are metal on metal because what that rust is going to do is if it's allowed to be in there, you just add oil and run it, you're going to cause premature wear because that rust is going to be like a lapping compound and it's going to, it's like sandpaper essentially. You're going to wear away at your surfaces and you're going to eventually have a lot of slop in this machine and make it completely useless. These shapers are very much similar to the tables on a bridge port. They have a gib in there, so you can see me taking that out. Um, it's just a screw adjustment, very similar to the gib that is in the table ways of any bridge port milling machine. Uh, that allows you to adjust the slop that is side to side in that shaping head there. <clears throat> so right here, we're taking the uh, pulley off, as you can see, very rusted on there. This part that I'm taking off right there is cast aluminum. That's what holds the motor to the machine. Now we're getting ready to break into the crankcase itself. So it's a worm gear driven uh, crankshaft. And we're gonna pull this thing apart here and now you can see the inner workings of it. So right there, that's essentially where your crankshaft is and that moves up and down. So when it comes to the center, you're gonna have very short strokes. And then when it's all the way out like it is currently, that's going to give you the longer strokes for cutting longer keyways. This side is how you adjust that crankshaft from moving up and down there, or I should say in and out from the center all the way out. Uh, right there you have the connecting rod. It has needle bearings in there, and there's quite a bit of rust in there. This thing had a very, it was neglected. It sat in a shop and got wet and rusted. So I got it all cleaned up there. I used some steel wool, try to get the rust off without taking too much of the metal off. Now putting it back together, I'm gonna to use whey oil inside that square shaft housing there so you're not having just metal on metal with no lubrication in there. And we're putting that crankcase back together here. Uh, that's a cap that goes on to the crankshaft to keep those needle bearings in place on the connecting rod. And now we're putting the bolts back together. And it's just, when you're putting one of these things back together, they're pretty straightforward. Um, if, you want, if you have one of these and you want to tear it apart and clean it up, it's a pretty easy to do job. Um, I would recommend getting new felt for the wiper. So at the end of that square shaft there, there it is right here, I'm pulling it out, that's the cover. And you put the old felt back on because I didn't have any. And then you put the cover back on there. That keeps the oil inside that shaft housing. There's a cast aluminum motor housing right there. We're putting that back on. And you know, put the pulley on and put this thing on the machine and fire it up. Uh, when I did go to put it back on the machine, <clears throat> I left the motor off just to save weight because these things are 
they're heavy. This is not a very lightweight piece of equipment. Um, here is the mounting bracket that goes onto the shaper head, and it's also attached to the back tailstock of the ram on the Bridgeport Mill. So there I have my head turned all the way to the back, and I'm using a table and the shaper itself to lift it up and get it in place so I can attach it. I could use the engine hoist to do this, but uh, this is just keeps it straight up and down, and I found this worked pretty well to get it on there. All right, so now we're getting ready to put the bolt in. It's just one bolt that holds it on the back of the tailstock here. We're going to tighten that down, and then we're going to get ready to put the motor on this thing. And this will also demonstrate how you can uh, tilt these shapers. So if you have a slot that you need to cut at an angle, you can just loosen some bolts, and just like that, tilt it. And you could even cut at a 90 degree angle if you wanted to. Now I'm going to attach the motor to this thing. Pretty easy to attach, just a couple bolts here, and throw the pulley cone on top. Uh, I did end up getting rid of the shaper. Um, I just did not use it enough to justify the space that it took up. And what I mean by that is I have to pull this bridge port out from away from the corner there to make room for that shaper to be able to sit in there. I work in a two car garage, space is tight, and I just, I couldn't justify it. This is a cool attachment. I liked it, but I didn't use it enough to justify the space it took up. So we're going to plug it in here and see how it runs. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video of seeing how these things kind of what the internal workings of them are, um, and hopefully this guy gave you some information. If you liked this video, hit the sub thumbs up and please subscribe. Um, as you can see, the final product there, yes, I used the light switch to turn it on and off, but it draws such little power, that's acceptable. And that's what it looks like when it's running. So thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.